In this video, we will show you how to replace your thermostat with housing assembly on this Ford Explorer. This will be mounted to your engine. Let's get into it. Let's make our way under the hood on the passenger side of the engine compartment is where you're going to find your coolant reservoir. Go ahead and take that cap, turn it counterclockwise and remove it. We'll give it a quick inspection and set that aside. Now we can make our way underneath the driver's side of the radiator. We're going to start draining this. To do that, you want to make sure you're wearing hand and eye protection at all times. Use a 19 millimeter. We'll turn this counterclockwise just enough to let the coolant drain into a collection bucket. Now that we have the coolant drained, make your way back up inside the engine compartment. Along the front of the vehicle, next to the air filter housing, you're going to find a little plastic trim panel. Remove that and set it aside. Below it, you're going to find that you have two 8mm headed bolts. Remove the pair. Now let's move rearward to the mass airflow sensor wiring harness. You'll find that it's clipped into the air filter housing box. We'll use a trim tool to pull this out of place. Now you can follow that wiring up to the mass airflow sensor. Underneath this area, you're going to find that you have a red locking tab. I'll show you that in just a minute. I'll use my trim tool or even a small screwdriver Pop that red locking tab out of the way, and then you can squeeze on the lock and disconnect this. There's the lock, and here's the tab that I was squeezing on. Underneath that area, you're going to find that you have two metal clips holding the top area of the air filter housing to the bottom. We'll pop both of those out of place. Once you have it unlatched, continue following that air inlet. In this area, you're going to find a gray locking tab. Go ahead and give that a little tug towards the front of the vehicle to unlock this. Slide it out of position and set it aside. We'll continue up towards the master cylinder. Remove this rubber hose. Give it a quick inspection, make sure it is still soft and pliable. Set that aside as well. The next thing we'll do is remove the air inlet tube from the throttle body. Use an eight millimeter to loosen this clamp. Now we can remove this from the vehicle. Set it aside. Now with that out of the way, it's always a good idea to remove the air filter and give it a close inspection. If it has to be replaced, now's a perfect time to do it. We'll set this aside. Now with all that out of the way, you have a nice clear view of the thermostat housing assembly. To start removing this, we're going to make our way to the upper hose. Squeeze the clamp, slide it up the hose, remove the hose and give the hose a quick inspection. You can use some pliers or hose clamp pliers, whatever works best for you. If you find that your hose is stuck in place, continue on with a hose pick. Be extremely careful not to damage the hose because we will be reusing it. We'll give it a quick squeeze, make sure it's soft and pliable. Continue on and do the exact same thing to every other hose. Now we'll start making our way towards the rear of the thermostat housing assembly. Squeeze that clamp. You 
some long pliers to get in here to this one. For this rearward one, you might have to use a straight pick to break it free. At this point, we have all of the hoses removed from the thermostat housing assembly. On this, you're going to find that you have two 8mm headed bolts. One down inside this area here, and one right up along the top. We'll start with the one that's a little bit harder to get to. Now we can remove the final bolt up here. Now if you were to look along the bottom of the thermostat housing assembly, you're going to find that you have a coolant tube that comes up and into it. So as we remove this, we're going to need to twist and pull it up and out diagonally. But what we don't want to do is remove this tube from inside of the belly of the engine. Almost out of there. There we are. There it is, friends. Now the next thing we want to do before we continue with the installation is to pay attention to the o-ring seal that comes around this crossover tube. Make sure it's still soft and pliable and it's not torn, worn, cracked or damaged in any way. We'll just give this a quick wipe. Continue on up along the engine where the thermostat housing assembly connects onto. Wipe that down and inspect it as well. All right, let's get ready to install our brand new thermostat housing assembly. This area right here is the area that will slide over the crossover tube. Let's take this and put it in place. Once you feel as though you have it properly in place, continue on with each of your two mounting bolts. Clean the threads and apply some thread sealant. Bring this right through. Start it in by hand so we're sure we are not cross-threading it into the engine. Before tightening this one, you also want to make sure you start the second bolt as well. Sometimes you might have to pivot it around a little bit to get it aligned. Now we can snug these up and we're going to tighten them in a specific sequence. The first time we torque them will be to 72 inch pounds. Once they're both torqued to 72 inch pounds, continue tightening them an additional 90 degrees, which is essentially a quarter turn. Now we can do that additional 90 degrees or quarter turn. Now we can start reconnecting our hoses. Let's go for the far rear first. Slide that on as far as you can and resecure the clamp. As you continue, make sure each hose is secured. Move along to the next one. Do the same thing. Let's get this one. Now we can put on the lower radiator hose. Slide this in here. Now we can reinstall the upper radiator hose. Just make sure that it's secured properly in the right position. Now we can reconnect our final hose up along the top here.
Now, once you're sure everything with the thermostat housing is secured, continue on to reinstalling your air filter and the air filter housing with inlet tube. For the air filter housing, you'll find that you have three little tabs protruding out of it. And in the lower part of the housing, you're going to have three slots. Go ahead and align that and put this in position. Now we'll start swinging this down and put the air inlet tube onto the throttle body. Make sure you press that on as far as you can and tighten this clamp. Double check to make sure it's tight and secure. You do not want any dirty or unmetered air making its way into the engine. We'll continue on to this rubber hose, pressing it down into position. Now we'll make our way down here. Install this tube as well. For this, you can just take it and press it in until you hear a click. There's a light click. Give it a tug to make sure it is secured. Now we can move along to the two metal clips that hold the upper housing to the lower housing. Let's take that wiring harness and re-secure it to the upper air filter box. Continue on to the mass airflow sensor connector. When you press this in position, after you hear a click, make sure you press in that red locking tab. There we are. Double check to make sure it's completely secure. Now we can move along to reinstalling those two 8mm headed bolts that hold the lower box to the body of the vehicle. Now it's time for the trim panel. We'll take this and slide it underneath this piece of the trim, align the locking tabs, and press it into the proper position. Now we can carefully make our way back underneath the vehicle and tighten up that drain. There we are. Keep in mind, you are only tightening this up into plastic. We don't want to strip anything. Now we can make our way back over to that coolant reservoir. We're going to start filling the cooling system. If you were to look along the side of the reservoir area here, you'll find that you have a level. In the end, when this is full, you want to be someplace inside of this leveled area. So what we'll do is we'll use a funnel. We'll start adding some coolant. After you've added plenty of coolant inside of the reservoir, you're going to want to start up the vehicle, let it run for a little while, and get up to normal operating temperature. While it's running, pay attention in this area. As air is burping its way out, the coolant will be making its way down so you will have to keep topping it off. It does not need to be filled all the way up to the top, only inside of that lined area. The coolant that you should use is Motorcraft Specialty Orange Coolant. You can also use Universal Coolant if needed. Now once you feel as though the vehicle is filled with coolant, go ahead and close up that cap on the coolant reservoir. Listen for a click so you know it's completely secure. At this point, you want to make sure you clean up your mess and take your vehicle for a road test. Aside from that, thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.